falling down before Christ and before yes. Him who is above all names. My God. My God, every knee shall bow. Thank you, mm. Jesus. True worshipers never give in. My Lord. One of the early church fathers, Polycarp. <coughs> Polycarp lived to be 86 years old, by the way. Mm. And Polycarp was a great follower of Christ, and he was an old man. And so eventually he was arrested by the Romans, and he was brought before the Roman Pro Council. Mm. And he stands before the Roman Pro Council, and the Roman Pro Council gives him the opportunity and says, Deny Christ. Deny the one you follow. Deny him. Deny that you are a follower of the way, that you are a Christ-like person, and we will spare your life because you are old. Eighty-six years have I served in Polycarp, declared, and he has done me no wrong, and how can I blaspheme my King and my Savior? The reality is that's the attitude we need as worshipers. That is the attitude we need as disciples of Christ. A worshiper is totally given to the idea and the calling of worship. Yeah. We find ourselves lost and enthralled in worship. Yeah. We find ourselves singing yeah. that song of worship. We find ourselves in that place of, oh, we've just got to thank God because we heard that song My come on the radio and it just reminded me of where Christ brought me yes. from. Yes. It reminded me of who I am. Who he is. Yes. It's not a time, it's not a place, it's not a song. It's a song that continually sings in your life. Yes, sir. Praise my God who hath redeemed me. Praise my God who hath saved me. Praise God who in his infinite mercy saw me and chose me from the beginning of time. Yes, Before I was formed in my mother's womb as Jeremiah tells yes. us, he yes. chose you. Yes, he had mercy on you. Yes, Worshippers relegate themselves to Christ. They ascribe Him worth instead of themselves worth. My it God. isn't about me seeing, being seen in worship. It's not about somebody else being seen in worship. It's not about the group playing. It's about the one we're singing about. It's about Him who is above all. Yeah. True worshippers and true disciples find themselves being servants. Paul called himself a servant of Christ. Yes. And as a matter of fact, he counted all things lost that he yes. might be a servant, servant yes. of Christ. I think we've lost that terminology today. My the idea God. of being a servant. My now, goodness. Mind you that the word in the Greek was literally the word that meant slave. Mm-hmm. Bond servant. Mm-hmm. So the idea of us being a servant is saying we are bonded to Christ. We are there to obey everything he says. And it is about his word that we live. It's about him. It's not simply about the next greatest speaker. It's not simply My about goodness. the next thing. It's about Christ. Yeah. It's about Him. He's more important. My God. We'll have to take up our own cross and follow after Christ. Yeah. I believe it means giving up everything that we have and counting ourselves as lost to gain Christ. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go out and sell everything you have, but I'm telling you to count everything as Christ and everything for His glory. And whatever He tells you to do, you do it. That's it. You listen to His Word because He is more important than anything we have. That's it. So hard in this world to... Where we have this world that promotes ourselves to promote Christ instead of ourselves. <laughs> Isn't it a self serving world? It is. Go to McDonald's, right? And you get your super sized meal. Amen. You have it right now. You can get the brand new car, and it's nice. But you know what? The reality is, it's all about Christ. That's it's all about, yes, Christ, I got this, but I'm dedicating the energy that I'm getting from this dude. For your glory. This automobile is for your glory. It's going to be to praise and proclaim you everywhere I go because there's Christian music coming out. And everywhere I go and every place I step, the darkness flees because Christ is there. Even if my car is driving down the road, the darkness flees because the darkness cannot handle the light. The light, that's it. We were studying this morning in 1 John and we were talking about the fact that when the light comes, the darkness flees. The reality is when you come, the darkness flees. The reality is if you are a believer in Christ and you are a disciple and you are walking and you are worshiping in Christ, the moment you walk into that building, the darkness flees and it cowers in the corner because you are there. And as soon as you walk to the corner, there is light in that corner and it's bound to flee. Flee. Yes, God. Mm. Mm, Yes, Mm. Lord. And a disciple is also a witness. Mm Mm-hmm. And a witness is a legal term, and it's someone who testifies to a fact or an occurrence, right? Mm-hmm. We are all witnesses to Christ. Amen. How many of us have had those moments in our life where we know beyond a shadow of a doubt Christ showed up? There yes. is nothing we can yes. do because that the world would call it supernatural. Yes. I call it the natural. 
Yeah. I call it what should be happening to us as life. My because God. God showed up and the natural became reality. Yeah. Come on. And we saw Christ do something. My we Lord. are witnesses for his glory. In the Bible, there was two or more witnesses would declare something and something to be true. And it was a biblical account. So the reality is when the believers came, it was a biblical account. Same thing that First John says, I'm a witness yeah. of what happened. I'm a witness of this. I know because I followed him. I know because I chose to change my life because I couldn't be the same I was before because Christ touched me. Yes, yes. God. Mm. To be a disciple of Christ is to be a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Mark 2.14. And to be a disciple of Jesus is to be a fruit bearer. Oh. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. fruit. So you will be my disciples. What separates a follower from a disciple is the fact that a follower doesn't produce much fruit. fruit. Whereas a disciple produces much fruit because all they can stand and all they can do is talk about Christ. My goodness. Can you imagine if we got so full of God ah. that the moment we walked out and we started talking and maybe our place of employment, the only thing that started coming out, oh man, God did something for me. Oh, I just can't handle it. I just got to say it. I just got to tell it I because God is so important. My God, I got to tell it. We weren't ashamed to speak the word. I also believe that a disciple is categorized by the fact that a disciple studies and obeys God's word. Think about it. How many times can the pastor or the preacher get up here and they begin to speak a word and you can complete the word? Mm -hmm. If you can complete the word, you've got the right attitude and you've got the right point. If somebody starts saying something and you're completing the rest of the scripture, you've got it right. My goodness. Mm. Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you mm -hmm. are my sight. That's it. Indeed. That's it. And also to be a disciple is to love one another. That's right. By this, know. you will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. One another. That's it. I want to challenge you today, and that's part of the reason for this message. I want to challenge you to think of being a disciple. Think of being a disciple as more than being a follower. Think of it as more than just going to church. Think of it as more than anything you've ever imagined. Think of it as an attitude and a lifestyle that says Christ is more important than anything in my life, and I want to serve him. I want to serve him today more than I served him yesterday. I want to have that moment and that account where I'm a witness. I'm a testimony to those I come in contact, where yes. I am continually worshiping, where I can't stop singing that song in my head because Christ has put it there, and I make an impact on my world. Yes. I believe that in order to affect this world, which, by the way, I believe is very lost, yeah. has very much denied Christ that we need disciples out there. We need true disciples. That's it. Well, men, hmm. right, because the one disciple was replaced, change the world for Right. Yes. Twelve men changed the world. How much more can we change it when there are more than twelve here today? My God. How much more can we affect the world if twelve men affected it then in those days by word of mouth? Oh, we have the internet and other technologies. We can affect and we yes. can change this world for Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. As the Bowens come forward to lead us in worship, I want you to consider that. And I want you to consider okay. where you stand in Christ. <laughs> where you need to be in Christ. What you need to do in your own life to perfect that relationship, to change that relationship, that you become more of a disciple and less of a follower. You become more devoted to serving Christ and less devoted to what this world has. I want to challenge you. What can you do for Christ? Who can you impact for Christ? Who can you change in this world for Christ? What impact can you have? at your job and at your school.